NFL is in Houston in the Space City at NRG Stadium. Today it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Houston Texans. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. And Dallas Flowers going to bring this out of the end zone. And he'll be out of bounds across the 25. The Colts take over first down and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive line, but the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Second down, another run with Taylor. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. Minshew sets to throw. And that one going to come up short. Low throw. Maybe a little over anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. He wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. Not liking the look. They'll change the play. In motion left goes a tight end. On second down, it's Taylor. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Denzel Perryman, and he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. That right there is the inauspicious start that they were hoping to avoid in a turnover on the first possession. I love how you use those college-bound words like that, inauspicious. Well done. I really appreciate that. Thank you. But here's the thing for me. I'm just wondering if their game plan is incorrect. You know, I think they felt like they could come in and throw it around pretty well. That interception early, they may rethink how they go about attacking. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. That was excellent from start to finish, from the blocking to the running, just well executed. And now let's look ahead because after that, how about a little play action, maybe a little bootleg, and get the quarterback out on the corner and give him a little run pass option. And they're right down here looking for six. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he'll take this one in for the Texans touchdown. Devin Singletary, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Texans take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know it sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Now this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. 
And remember the last time out, they threw the interception. That led to the touchdown, so now time to regroup. It certainly is, and their goal right now as they go back out on the field, a calming drive, something that takes the ball, keeps it for a while, lets the defense relax a little bit, lets the offense regain confidence in their game plan. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Minshew. Finds his big tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Minshew's throw into the hands of Pittman here. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 23 yards on the play. It's a gain of 23 yards. First down, Colts. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 34. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. 6-0 our score after one. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Colts in possession as they've got it with a second and 13 forthcoming. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback laying on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Four yards on the pick up there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. Minshew not coming off. They'll try and go for it. On fourth down, Minshew. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side. So the drive will continue after the conversion on fourth. They'll work from the 20 on first down. the middle. Here's Taylor. And they'll get to him just inside the 15. Even after the strong run we just saw, they're able to corral him quickly defensively. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four.
from the gun. It's Taylor. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. That's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he is not going anywhere. He will not even get back to the line of scrimmage as the clock will stop at the two-minute warning. Matt Gay now gets ready for the field goal try. From the left hash, a 31-yard attempt. And Gay knocks this one through, and they are on the board, trailing now at 6-3. to three. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Colts going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. the ball away and it falls incomplete. Zone coverage there and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time there was not much of a window to get the ball in there and it winds up incomplete. Now Stroud. Open man downfield is Woods. He's to the 15. Touchdown Houston. Texans are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed limits out there. And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Second down, another run with Taylor. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. On third down, here's Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. On 
Off play action, it's Minshew. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Picked up by the former first rounder, Jimmy Moore. An unfortunate sequence there, trying to get points before intermission, but now the interception, and their opponents have a chance to possibly pad their lead. Yeah, they had an opportunity there, and they weren't able to capitalize on it, and that's something that could come back and haunt them later. They're begging their defense now to keep them from scoring before the half ends. His second catch, this one not quite as dynamic as his first, and it's second down. Here's Stroud. Open man is Noah Brown. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. And Stroud now to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Back to throw, here's Stroud. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Nico Collins as the first half is winding down. And the Texans will extend their lead here just before halftime. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my oh, man in concert. But D'Amico Ryans, even with the defensive mindset, he'll elect to go for two here. Stroud's going to try to throw for the conversion. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage. Put your heels on the goal line at worst. If they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And only six seconds on the clock, so time likely for just one play. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. They'll throw now on the final play. Minshew going to be intercepted for the third time. Picked off by the former first rounder, Jimmy Moore. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL, and it's a presentation of EA Sports. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. Taking it about the one. And he's going to get this across the 20 as he's out of bounds at the 23. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air, and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well, and most importantly, partner, 
Yeah, they went to the tunnel with a the lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Stroud. Another one caught by Collins. And he's brought down. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure this point. Well, they get to Stroud, nowhere to go, and he goes down. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. Throwing now is Stroud. And it's knocked away and incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play. One that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Stroud on third down now. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball. But he was unable to get away from the defender. Couldn't create space. Couldn't uncover at the end of the route. And that one winds up incomplete. Now look at this, fourth and 12, and they're going to line up to go for it. Play action. Stroud now. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Fourth down, no problem. 19 yards that time, and now it's first and 10. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. They suspected it. It was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Second down and eight. They'll toss this right side to Singletary. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Now here's Stroud on third down. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So they'll accept that penalty, and that'll, of course, move the football up the field. On first down, here's Stroud. And that will be caught, but out of the end zone, says the field judge. It's ruled incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target in the second half. Touchdown! Nico Collins, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. But D'Amico Ryans, even with the defensive mindset, he'll elect to go for two here. They'll try and throw for it. And no, it falls incomplete. So the two-point conversion, no good. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. Down the right sideline. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor, 81 yards, and the Colts get a bit closer. And now the Colts are going to keep the offense on the field as they'll go for two here.
They'll let Taylor try and run. And he will dive into the end zone, and the two-point conversion is successful. And so they run it in on the two-point try. You know, so often, Charles, we talk about, from the offense's perspective, what you do on the two-point conversion. How about the defense? How do they play run versus pass? It's really difficult for them because I think most teams want to play for the pass. That's what they see most teams do. And so are you able to mass enough people inside if a team decides to run it? Very difficult. I think what you're seeing a lot more now, people blitzing the two-point conversion. They want you to make a quick decision and make it right now. There the offense wins the battle for two. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Singletary again. Shrugs him off. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. They're going for it. Here's Stroud. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Fourth down conversion plays. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe 10. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. A shotgun snap to Stroud. Throw left side complete. It's Brown. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Stroud to throw it. A throw out wide, going to be incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Again, it's Stroud. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting to gain. That's complete. It's Collins. And they'll get him down short of the first down, right on the 10-yard line. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that'll bring up fourth down. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. Let's go now. now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. Stroud looking to throw. And intercepted, maybe the turning point they need. And the Colts are right back in this football game. Now the Texans have burned the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line.
Well, looks like they'll move things around here. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. Here's Minshew. And his throw is going to be incomplete. When you count on one hand the number of completions you've had in a game and we're in the second half, that tells you it's really not been your day. Yeah, but you're losing. You can't just abandon the passing game altogether. Yeah, maybe you can get hot, string a few together, and get rolling. Now a second and ten. Looking to throw it. Minshew. Escaping the pressure right. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Jalen Petrie picks it up. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. He exited the pocket trying to improvise. That was a tough throw, and unfortunately, it wound up in the wrong pair of hands. And Brandon, when you're on the run, sometimes your downfield vision can get skewed just a bit. Now, the beauty of extending a play is sometimes your receivers find their way open. Oftentimes, you end up closing down part of the field and bringing those defenders to the bar. And that one was picked off. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Nico Collins, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Texans have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. He has really settled in throwing the football, and that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie, but he's playing like fourth quarter, and the QB is easy. How about this guy? Youngster, not worried about anything, just cutting it loose and having fun. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. And they're at the point in the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. Here's second and ten. Now Minshew. And this one is going to be off the mark too far out in front. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. The Colts on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Minshew sets to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A big one there on third down. They hit for 30 yards. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. Minshew, first and ten. And my goodness, another interception. Jalen Petrie picks it off. And they finally put an end to this return, but not before he's all the way down to the 37. Well, there's two sides to this coin. I mean, on one side, five interceptions now thrown for him. That's tough, but man, this defense, they have been ball hawking and impressive. 
But Charles, let's flip it back over. If you're coaching a quarterback that's struggling this much at this stage of the game, do you maybe try to get him out? I would think about it. I think about it awfully hard, but also you might want to look into his eyes, see what he has. He might be one of those players that you don't want to affect his confidence by actually pulling him out of the game. So you have to know your player. You have to know the situation. That one looks like he'll throw here. And his throw here is incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. 19 tight, 19. Now Stroud. Got him in, it's Brown. And this play gonna be stopped in its tracks at the 32, and obviously well short of the first down. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that's gonna bring up a fourth down. Stroud sets up the play action. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with the football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. Throwing on first down is Minshew. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. So first and 10 now from the 30. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. Well, these guys are not going to go out with their tails between their legs. They're going to keep taking their shots until the clock's at triple zeros. But that one, like a lot of others, winds up incomplete. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Michael Pittman, 30 yards. And the Colts have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. They'll let Taylor try and run. And he will dive into the end zone, and the two-point conversion is successful. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand seam. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Ready, ready! Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. He's going to take a shot right away for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Colts come up with a late turnover, but it will probably only matter to the statisticians as this ball game is now officially over. So this one in the win column for the Texans. And it was their quarterback who led the way, Charles. Pretty impressive play for a rookie. Yeah, I thought he was brilliant today, Brandon. He had four touchdown passes, and it felt like whatever the defense threw at him, he had a counter. He was just playing with confidence all afternoon long. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.